Hi friends, it's Dana here. We are back with some experiments for the summer science. And of course, I have my helper Henrik here to help me out with this particular one. But today we're gonna learn all about light waves. Ooh. So if you have a favorite flashlight, that is for sure something you'll be needing. And I have a list of other things that you'll need. So here we go, let's see what it is it. Flashlight, number one, a book. I might use this one. Two cardboard tubes. I saved um, a tube from a toilet paper roll and a tube from my, um, yep, there it is, and a tube from the uh, paper towel. So those ones will work fine. Or maybe if it's like a birthday time, you can save a tube from some wrapping paper, anything like that. I even make tubes with paper. So if you don't have any tubes laying around, like you can roll up a piece of paper, that works too. Uh, tape, we have just, you know, plain old scotch tape here, um, but packaging tape or masking tape would work. Also a glass of water in a clear glass. So we have a very tall mason jar full of water here that we'll be talking about, but as long as it's clear and you can fill it up halfway, that is all we need. Um, we need a straw, you saw that in there. Any straw, ours happens to be brown. Toy blocks, we just went upstairs and got our blocks from our toy room. So just a small amount so you can make a small structure. Um, oh, I have flashlight on here again. That, I must have been thinking that was really important. And spoon, oh, I think we forgot the spoon, Henrik. Can you go get me one? A bigger spoon would be good. <laughs> so those are the things we need. I have that list in the comments, if you are not in the comments, in the description of this video, if you need to go get that. Um, and just feel free to press pause and go get all those things so you can follow along with me. All right, there's the spoon. Okay, so we're gonna be reading Light Waves. It's by David A. Adler and illustrated by Anna Raff, and it is full of fun. So here we go. We need light to see. Plants need light to grow. Animals need plants to eat. Since plants and animals are the food we eat, we would have no food without light. Without light, we just could not survive. We need light, but what is it? You can see it, but you can't touch it. You can't hold it, carry it, taste it, or smell it. Light is a form of energy. Energy is the ability to do work. Energy comes from the sun in the form of sunlight. It is transferred to the grass, then to the cattle. From the cattle, it is transferred to the hot dogs. <laughs> From the hot dogs, it is transferred to us. Henrik's over there giggling. <laughs> it's a good one. Much of our light comes from the sun. Light from the sun, solar energy, can be collected. It can be used to power our machines and heat our homes. The sun is almost 93 million miles, or about 150 million kilometers from the earth. That's a long way. It would take a speeding car at 60 miles or about 97 kilometers an hour more, an hour more than 170 years to travel that far. But it takes sunlight just eight minutes to travel from the sun to the earth. Light travels at the tremendous speed of 186,000 282 miles per second or 299,000 mile, 1,792 kilometers per second. Think of the fastest you've ever seen your parents drive and I guarantee that it's over 100,000 miles per hour than the fastest your parents have ever driven. <laughs> That's fast. Nothing travels faster. When we see light, we're seeing streams of light waves. These streams are made of photons. Photons are tiny bits of light that travel together in wavy streams of light. It's the smallest form of light. You can think of the waves as very long bands with crests, high points, and valleys, low points. Waves of light with their crests and valleys travel in straight lines. Let's show that light light waves travel in straight lines. You will need your flashlight, a book, and two cardboard tubes from rolls of toilet paper or paper towels, and some tape. 
Hopefully you have all those things already. Stand the book up on a desk or table with the front facing you. All right, let's see. I, I was gonna use this book, but I think I'm gonna keep it open. So I, instead I'm gonna use this cardboard box from this game that we like to play. Oh, now you got a nice little view of my hand. Sorry about that, everyone. So we have this cardboard box. Here's one side, here's the other. Okay. Hold the flashlight close to the book and turn it on. The front of the book is bathed in light. The front, the back is not. That's because light waves travel in straight lines. They travel straight at the book. They do not go around it. Let's do that. So, here is my book. See, the light hits the front of my book, AKA box top, and it is not going through it. I cannot see any light coming through here. Whoop. Whoop. All right. That worked pretty good. Next, tape two cardboard tubes together. Now you have one long tube. Take the tubes and flashlight to someplace dark. This is as dark as it's going to get here. Since the flashlight, shine the flashlight through one end of the tube, the light should shine through the tube and out the other end. We're going to use this one right here. What was kind of handy dandy about this one is that one fit inside the other. So we can just do that for now. Yep, Henrik figured that out. Let's see. Okay, so the little bit of light is escaping around, but watch what I do. Whoa! The light was shining through that tube. Incredible, huh? Hopefully it didn't hurt your eyes with that shining. Let's see, what's next? Now, where the two tubes were taped, bend them so they no longer form one straight tube. Shine the flashlight through one end of the tube. The light waves will not shine through the other end because light waves only travel in straight lines. Okay, this is where the tape comes in. And we just need to make it kind of, kind of go like this, Henry, like this. Can you bend it? There, it's kind of turned a little bit. We're gonna tape it on so it doesn't move. Let's see, we gotta make sure that there's a pretty good bend, otherwise it might, you know, find its way through there some way or another. Let's see. Okay, we're shining our light. Is it coming through? Let's see. Oh, it still is a little bit. We're gonna have to bend it some more. What that means is that there's still a straight path through for it. That is a troublesome thing. We're gonna have to find a way to make so there's no straight path through. It's still a space. There we go. So I just took this whole tube and bent it. Let's see if that does it. Okay. Now we got kind of like pipe. Oh, well, that's silly. It's still coming through. I wonder how that is. It's kind of reflecting through, which we'll hear a little bit about. But really, I think what we're seeing is the light that's hitting the top of the bend. It's not coming through and sort of blinding you the way that it was before. So it's not a perfect experiment, but it kind of gets the point across. The point being that light travels in straight lines. All right. Light waves travel through air in straight lines, <laughs> but you can bend the light. Let's bend light waves. What you need is a clear glass with a, and a drinking straw. Fill the glass at least halfway with water. Put the straw in the water. The straw seems to bend at the water line. The straw looks bent, but it's not. Take the straw out of the water. It's straight. The straw seemed to bend when it was in the water because light waves travel more slowly through the water than through the air. When light waves travel at different speeds, they seem to bend things. This is called refraction. Okay. So this is gonna be kind of tough to see, but it goes in and it kind of, it doesn't necessarily look bent. And of course the ball jar doesn't have the best, um, it's all this writing on it and stuff. But can you see how it kind of looks different in there? Maybe a little bit bigger in the water, or it looks like it kind of does something funny when it hits the water. That is what they're talking about, okay? See if we can do it again. Maybe your glass is clearer. This one is just not super duper easy to see. There, you can kind of see it there. Look at that. 
All right. Hopefully you were able to see that. Now that, the reason why we um, that happened again is refraction. We, the light bent and made it look distorted. Light won't travel at all through this book. It doesn't travel through stone or wood. It won't travel through you. Stone, wood, books, and people are opaque. Light won't pass through them. Opaque objects and light rays form shadows. Let's create some shadows. What you will need are toy blocks. Henrik's starting to stack them up for me. Flashlight, hopefully you still have that. And a room that can be darkened. This is as dark as it gets for us. On the floor or on a table, pile the blocks into a tower. Darken the room, turn on the flashlight, and point its light at the blocks. One side of the tower is bathed in light. You can see the blocks clearly. Look directly behind the blocks. There's a dark shape on the floor or table. It's roughly the same shape as the tower and blocks. That darkened shape is a shadow. Shadows are formed when opaque objects block light rays. Let's see if we can get this to happen in my not completely dark. Oh yes, this is going well. Okay, Henrik. Ooh, putting a little top on it, huh? Ooh, there we go. Even though it wasn't completely dark here, we were able to get a shadow. Thank you for holding that. Okay, so do you see that long brown thing that comes off the side of the blocks? That is the shadow, yep. And as you can see, the light bathes the one side of the blocks. It's really bright on the side that's facing more by me. And the side that Henrik is pointing at has the dark line, which is the shadow. And now they're gonna make some shadow puppets. <laughs> All right, have you ever made shadow puppets? This is the same idea. Light does travel through some things. Of course, light waves travel through air. Light also travels through glass and clear plastic wrap. That's because air, glass, and clear plastic wrap are transparent. Light doesn't travel completely through wax paper, frosted glass, or honey. If you look through a sheet of wax paper, whatever is on the other side of the paper seems blurry. That's because wax paper, frosted glass, and honey are translucent. Light waves bounce off surfaces such as apples, the hoods of cars, and large bodies of water. When light waves hit a shiny and completely flat surface, the light waves bounce straight back. Then you get a reflection of what is facing that tiny flat surface. A mirror, or shine, a mirror is shiny and flat. It reflects just about all the light that hits it. A light bound, the light bounces directly off the mirror, so you get an almost perfect reflection of whatever is facing it. Imagine you're in a playground and you throw a ball against a wall. The ball bounces right back. That's what happens when you look at a mirror. The light waves bounce right back. When you look at the surface that's not as shiny and flat as the mirror, the light rays don't bounce right back. They become somewhat scattered so you don't get an exact reflection. Get a large shiny metal soup spoon. It's shiny like a mirror, but it's not flat. Look at the back of the spoon. You can see yourself, but it's not an exact reflection. Your reflection should be somewhat elongated. Let's see. Hmm. Yes, I'm very elongated. Let's see. Ooh, and there's Henrik back there being very elongated. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to use that as my mirror in the morning. To understand why your reflection is elongated, mm -hmm. imagine you are in a playground with a huge half globe. If you throw the ball against the top part of the globe, the ball bounces up. If you throw the ball straight ahead, it bounces straight back. If you throw the ball against the bottom part of the globe, the ball bounces down. That's what happens when you look at the back of the spoon. The light waves do not all bounce straight back. Light waves bounce up off the top of the spoon and down off the bottom, making an elongated reflection. Look at the inside of a shiny bowl of the spoon. Again, the spoon makes a bowl. The side that scoops <laughs> up soup, your reflection is upside down. Let's see here. Ooh, there's not a lot of light. I can't even hardly tell that was me. Oh my, the whole world's upside down if I really look close. Yep. Oh, now I see myself. I had to get kind of close to it. I'm in there. All right. 
I am definitely upside down too. Again, I wouldn't want to use this spoon to be my mirror in the morning. Let's see why that is. To understand why your reflection is upside down, imagine you walk behind the huge half globe in the playground and there's no back to it. It's a large concave shape. If you throw the ball down against the bottom part of the globe that bounces, the ball bounces up. See down here? Throw it down, it goes look. When you look at the front of the spoon, light waves that strike the bottom of the spoon bounce up and light waves that strike the bottom of the top of the spoon bounce down. So they, it's like throwing the ball up here at the top and they bounce down. Up goes down and down goes up. The reflection on a shiny concave shape is upside down. Now my question is, I never understood why it doesn't get all garbled, but it just must reverse. Pure light looks clear as if it has no color. We call that white light, but white light is not really colorless. It's made of a spectrum of colors. A prism, a triangular column of glass, can be used to split white light into seven colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet light waves. Roy G. Biv. Think again of the light waves as tiny bands made up of tiny bits of light. These bands of light have crests, high points, and valleys, low points. What makes the colors of the light waves different is the distance each color has between its crests. With the red waves, the distance between the crests is the greatest. See how there's the greatest distance here? The distance is smallest with the violet rays down here. We see objects because light waves are reflected off of them. But not all light waves are reflected. Some lights are absorbed. When an apple appears red, it's because red light waves are reflected off the apple. The other color waves are absorbed. When a sheet of paper appears white, all the colors of the spectrum are reflected off the paper. When the cover of your notebook appears black, none of the color spectrum are reflected. They have all been absorbed. Light does more than illuminate our world. It colors it. I love these illustrations. Look at all that. That white paper is just rejecting all of those light waves. <laughs> light waves are just part of the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible part of waves of waves of energy that pass through our world. In the visible spectrum, the distance between the crests of the waves is the greatest with red light, but there are light waves with a slightly greater distance between crests. We cannot see them. Those are infrared light waves, sometimes called hot light. In the visible spectrum, the distance between the crests of the waves is the smallest with violet light. But there are light waves with a slightly shorter distance between crests. We just cannot see them. Those are ultraviolet light waves, a form of radiation that gives us suntans, or for me, sunburns. In addition to ultraviolet and infrared waves that we cannot see, there are other waves of energy beyond the visible spectrum, including microwaves, radio waves, X-rays, and gamma rays. There's certainly more to the form of energy we know as light than simply flicking a switch and illuminating a dark room. Light sustains our world. There is a glossary in the back of this, of course, and we introduced a lot of new words today. But ultimately, I hope you learned quite a bit. I know I learned a lot, especially using this silly spoon here. That was really interesting for me, and I thought it was great understanding all of the ways that light can travel, which is mainly straight, but it can be reflected. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for reading and doing science with me and Henrik. Have a great day. Bye.